So I bought the MacBook M1 Pro some weeks ago. I took the base model 16 gig of RAM and 512 gig of storage. I use it for my work, mainly editing in Premiere Pro and the whole Adobe suite like After Effects, Photoshop and Lightroom. I also use it for developing apps. I am an iOS developer. I build apps for iPhone and iPad. So yeah, I use it for a lot of stuff. The MacBook M1 Pro replaced my 2017 MacBook Pro that start to be old and cannot manage to work properly for editing 4K footage. Even my Windows struggle a lot with editing 4K footage. It's time for change. The screen is a Pro Display screen. It means it can display 120 frames per second. It's very very smooth to use. I feel that my eyes are less tired using this screen. With this Mac we have three USB-C port which is great and you can use them all because no need to charge the Mac with an USB-C port but with MagSafe port. Comparing with my old Mac I have three times more USB-C. The Mac is connected with the USB-C display port to my second screen that can display 120 44 frames per second. The HDMI port is HDMI 2.0 that cannot manage more than 60 frames per second. This is why I use USB-C DisplayPort Connectic because it can display 144 frames per second. The Connectic is very good. We also can put an SD card without using a hub. It's always annoying to carry something else in your bag and you don't have to buy something more. And the transfer speed is very, very, very fast comparing to the hub one that I use with my MacBook Pro 2017 and my uh, PC. The chipset M1 Pro and the 16 gig of RAM makes everything fast and smooth. I can open all the main softwares that I use at once and everything still runs smoothly. Before I was so annoyed and frustrated with my slow Mac and my PC. We'll talk about this in the next chapter. You can unlock your MacBook Pro with your fingerprint thanks to Touch ID. So everything about this Mac make my work easier and efficient. Therefore, it make me way more productive than ever. It's really cool to have such a powerful machine that can help me do all my work and anywhere I want. Because don't forget guys, it's a laptop. I mainly use my MacBook Pro M1 Pro for editing 4K footage at 25 FPS and some slow motion at 1080p, 50 FPS and 100 FPS with my Sony A7C. So it can easily be very very heavy to manage for a laptop or a PC. For my first video about how to find your passion, I struggled so bad for editing and wondering the video. For the editing process, the playback was so slow, I couldn't play back with lots on and I always had to wonder before playing playing back some part of the editing, especially when there is some animations. Overall, Premiere Pro was very very slow. And the rendering, this is where the nightmare started. In Windows, the rendering had a lot of bugs and sometimes it just stuck and it didn't work. I was stuck the whole day trying to fix the issues, but nothing worked. So I transferred the project in an external hard drive to try to render the project in my 2017 MacBook Pro. And the rendering of my video worked for the first time. I don't say it's only because of Windows because my PC is quite old. But Mac proved me that they do the job. It took one hour of wondering for my 2017 MacBook Pro to render my video how to find your passion. With my new MacBook Pro M1 Pro, the rendering is way faster. It took me between 10 minutes and 15 minutes, but obviously it depends on the video and the length of the video. The ecosystem is one of the reasons of my choice of buying this MacBook Pro. But the choice of going with the MacBook Pro was easy because I am an iOS developer. I build apps for iPhone and iPad. So I program on Apple software called Xcode. In my old MacBook Pro, it's damn slow. For a big project that I'm working on, it took me like 15 minutes to build and run the project. And for the same project in my MacBook Pro M1 Pro, it took me less than 2 minutes. Exactly 1 minute and 45 seconds. Impressive. And you know the saying, time is money. 
the Apple ecosystem is very good. How all Apple devices work together is very beautiful to see. For example, on my new MacBook Pro, when I press in the moon icon to be on the do not disturb mode, I got the same mod in all my other devices on my iPhone and on my iPad. This is great. In one press, I have zero notifications and only pure productivity and focus. When you get a call, you can't miss it. With the Apple ecosystem, you get the call in all your devices, which is pretty cool. You can edit on the setting which devices do you want to allow for getting calls. And of course, you can get text messages on your MacBook Pro iPad. You can use AirDrop, which is very practical to send and share files with all the Apple devices. I use it to send some footage from my iPhone. It's easy and quick. In the settings, you can choose from who you'd like to be able to receive AirDrop files. Hand off let you start working on a device and let you continue in another device or let you transfer an action from one device to another. It's super cool. For example, if you are taking notes in your iPhone, you can easily continue this on your MacBook Pro. There's a lot of apps that are compatible with handoff like Safari and email. The universe clipboard lets you copy and paste cross devices. Isn't that cool? The continuous camera. You can use your iPhone as a webcam for your MacBook Pro. You'll have a way better quality than the MacBook Pro webcam. There is tons of stuff that are great and useful with the Apple ecosystem. Oh, and I forgot iCloud. You have all your data cross device. For the battery management, there's a lot of talking in this subject. Some people let their MacBook Pro plug in while they work and some people don't. But one certain thing is that you should let the battery between 30 and 80%. Since 2019, with the battery optimization of macOS, your Mac learn your habits to take care of your battery longevity. Personally, I let it plugged when I use it and when I stop, I unplug it. And sometimes I use the MacBook Pro on battery until 30% because letting the battery at 100% over time put stress on it and it can damage it. There is tons of videos about the subject. I let you do a little bit of research. So go on your finder and in view you have show path bar and show statue bar and this lets you see where you are in the file management hierarchy and how many space you have left in your storage because we never know how many space we have without looking around finder and in settings and here new finder window show you most probably have on show recent but you want to when you open a new finder you want to see something more useful like your document for example so do that and here on tags so in tags you can disable the tags or uh, let the tags I use the web tag, for example, I tag my uh, videos here. So when I plug my hard drive, I automatically have the videos, the stock footage that I tagged. So in the red here, you can see it will appear. So here you have my stock footage, for example, when I take away my hard drive, it will go. So you can use tags or not to manage your files. And here in sidebar, so me, I let recent hard drop application desktop, more like minimalistic sidebar so I don't get lost. But if you want to add music, movie, and some other stuff, you can. And here in advanced, for the love of God, when performing a search, please don't let it at search this Mac because it's going to search in the whole Mac and it's going to show equivalent result. So you want to perform your search on the current folder. For example, on my document here, when I search notes, it's only on document, not in this Mac. And now, when you click on the vertical bar with command, you can go to the doc settings directly. Take away this show recent application in doc because your doc is going to be flooded with the application that you don't use all the time. So just turn it off to keep your doc clean. And cool thing to do, you can close all the windows of the same apps with pressing option and the red cross here. Magic. You can copy anything with pressing, for example, let's copy test folder, option, you keep pressing and you let go. It's a copy. You can long press a key to reveal accented alphabet. For example, let's put this one. You can use the emojis by pressing control, command and space. Let's put this one. 
So in conclusion, should you take the MacBook Pro M1 Pro? It depends. First, it's very expensive. My friend told me that you need to invest in yourself and buy the tools that you need to do a great work. So to me, it was a no-brainer. But yeah, it's it's very expensive. The MacBook Pro M1 Pro is such a powerful machine. It's so much powerful than my old MacBook Pro 2017 and my PC. So it's very enjoyable to work in such condition in daily basis. It makes me just focus on my work and do a great job. And I'm not annoyed and frustrated anymore. I just enjoy to work and I do my best work. And it's a laptop so I can work whenever I want. And this is a big plus for me. And before I couldn't because I did my editing work mainly on my PC. So now I feel more free. All right, so thank you for watching this video. You can subscribe if you want, like and comment, and you can follow me on my Instagram account. It's in the description. Thank you, bye. Ha, ha, ha.